Konnichiwa, welcome back. So, you'll know what this is about after you've seen the thumbnail. It, one of the comments I got in one of my recent videos got me thinking about this subject. I think the comment, if I remember rightly, was regarding the um, NES and Famicom and the, you know, the design differences between the two. But it just sent the old mind wandering down a little side road about sort of the best looking consoles that there's ever been made so I thought it might make an interesting fun little video um, I think with any of these sort of top 10 favorite style lists it's it's fueled by nostalgia in a lot of cases and what I like and what I think is good you know you might think is absolute crap and you know you've got your own favorites and that's the beautiful thing about video games in general and you know we can all have an opinion and the only opinion that really matters to us is our own and it don't really matter what other people think but it's nice to hear you know how people different people like different things in my opinion so anyway like I say I, th I started thinking about the best looking consoles ever made and and I'm, I'm talking purely from an aesthetic and cosmetic point of view I'm not in no way is how good the console is for games that's irrelevant it's just as an art piece a, a piece of plastic how good does it look on a shelf that's the only thing I'm considering here and I'm only talking about consoles and you know I'm, I'm talking about everything right from the year dot right up until current day stuff um, I'm not taking into account home computers because I think that's a totally separate subject all on its own you know you could rank ten of them if, as well quite easily I would say um, so anyway I think before I sort of run through my top ten favorite best looking consoles I just got a few honourable mentions. I think the first one I'll I'll throw in the mix is all the kind of special edition versions of modern consoles you can get. You know, that, there are loads of them. Some better than others, and they're more often than not focused on a franchise. And if you like that particular franchise, I think they're gonna they're gonna really appeal to you. Um, the only ones I've got in this sort of genre are ironically my two modern, con well modern to me anyway, they're not current gen, but my PS4 and my Xbox One are both special edition consoles. Um, if I remember I'll stick a picture up here because there are too many wires to disconnect them to show you. Um, but I've got a Metal Gear Solid PS4 which is nice, red, red and over black. And then I've got the Cyberpunk Xbox One, which I think, to be honest, is a is an awesome looking console. And it, you know, it's got all different textures on it, and it's an awesome bit of kit. Um, and the one that really appeals to me most out of all of these, um, I've never owned one, is the R2D2 Xbox 360. I think that's mega, fantastic thing. Um, who knows if I'll ever buy one, probably not, but that, they're awesome to look at in my opinion. And I think, like I say, if you've got a, a particular fondness for whatever franchise that they're sort of styled on, all of them can be mega. The biggest problem is they always come out after you've bought a console and it, it means you've got to buy something you've already got again just because it looks a bit sexy. So that's really why I've never gone down the route. Um, I only ended up with the Xbox and PlayStation ones because... You know, I bought them, well, quite recently, really. You know, within the last couple of years I've bought them because I've, you know, I've only sort of got into that generation very recently. So that's the only reason I've ended up with them. Right. That's the first honourable mention. Uh, the second one, I would say, is the PC Engine. Perhaps not that remarkable to look at on its own, but... I just love how small it is and it, it's a I like how it looks as well don't get me wrong 
but you know it's so tiny it's unbelievable and, and it's a powerhouse i mean it's an it's, it's an amazing console as well so i know we're not talking about that but just how it looks i really think it's fantastic and there are obviously various versions of this you know this is the original white model but you know aside from the color you know the core graphics which is gray with blue writing and then the core graphics too with gray with orange writing look exactly the same aside from different logo here um, they're all equally fantastic this is just the one I've got so that's why I'm showing this but you could argue for any one of them in my opinion all fantastic looking consoles and particularly because they're so small and kind of I don't know it's such a it's such a tiny package but awesome love it uh, my last honorable mention and this was close to getting in my top 10 I've got to say I think there is some nostalgia talking here with me on this one and it's the Master System 1. Very angular. You could argue it's designed with a ruler. Um, but I had one back in the day. Loved it. Um, I remember doing a technical drawing project at school. And I, you know, I, I sort of uh, drew this out using, I don't know what it was now, some kind of technical drawing style. It might have been, I think it was two point projection or, I can't remember, but I remember doing it. And with all the different angles, I remember it being quite tricky. But, such a fantastic console. You know, like I say, I love the angular design. You could argue it's quite 1970s in a way, I suppose. Um, even though it's sort of mid 80s, but absolutely love it. Um, far better than the, the sequel, in my opinion, the old bread bin. Um, love it. Master System 1. Right, we're on to the proper top 10 now. Which of the top 10 consoles I think are the best ever made? Number 10. I'm going with the Dreamcast. Again... This is quite similar reasoning to the PC Engine. For what it is, it's, it's a very small console. So well packaged. You know, four controller ports, built-in modem. You know, the CD, obviously, it's got to in, in, uh, be big enough to take the CD. And really, it's not much bigger than a CD, plus the control ports, to be honest. You know, a little modem on the side ahead of its time the Dreamcast absolutely ahead of its time online gaming revolutionary at the time um, it was just it was a bit too early I think and it suffered from Sega sort of past complacencies and people went elsewhere and it is what it is nevertheless I do think the Dreamcast is an awesome looking console um, aged really well Still looks fantastic. This is a Japanese model, obviously, because of the orange swirl. But the PAL one's just the same. Um, amazing looking console, in my opinion. That's the Sega Dreamcast. Number nine. Similar kind of era. An iconic console. And an iconic design for me. We've got the PS1. The original PS1 such a fantastic looking console in my opinion love the design again this central sort of circular uh, disc tray and then that's sort of complemented by the circular buttons love these sort of angular blades on the side fantastic I just love whatever angle you look at it I think it looks cool and iconic again it could be nostalgia because it was such a massive console at the time but I do think it's an awesome console 
and I think it forever will be to be honest it, it's just iconic that's the PS1 then at number 8 this I wouldn't say I'll, again we're not talking about how good the console is for games I just love the iconic style of this console and I'm talking about the GameCube I mean it, it kind of does what it says on the tin it looks like a cube but it's so different to anything else I absolutely love it again super small um, obviously helped by the fact it hasn't got to take CDs um, or again the four controller ports but the handle I mean has anybody ever walked down the street with one of these but I just love the design of it it's just mega such an iconic again iconic looking console but so different to anything else it gets huge brownie points to uh, for me for that absolutely love it and I, again you can get this in varying different colors and special edition forms um, I had the original Indigo one um, but for me the spice orange one is the best um, shame it never left Japan really because I think it's it's absolutely sensational that's the Nintendo GameCube at number eight now number seven I think somebody mentioned this in the comments as well recently it might have been the same guy I think if I remember rightly um, and it's the Mega Drive 1 we've got a Genesis here same thing almost um, again absolutely iconic design just it looks fantastic and so much better than the nasty Mega Drive 2 hate that thing but you know in comparison with this it's pants Mega Drive 1 looks stunning it's just again another iconic design I would say the Japanese one is definitely the best which I do own but it's in storage and it was too hard to dig out hence why I've picked this one off the shelf um, yeah I, I do think that the Japanese one is a much not much but it certainly is the best looking of the three variants um, you've obviously got Genesis isn't there and you've got um, a slightly brighter red and a much larger 16-bit logo looks sensational and you've got a blue um, reset button I'll put a picture up here so you can see what I'm uh, talking about if you've not seen one but I also think in conjunction with the Mega CD one or Sega CD one if you're in America an iconic looking bit of kit and it does it feels a well made nice bit of kit um, you know you've got the two together stacked on top of one another kind of like a little hi-fi it does look good I've got to say um, absolute stunner um, you could argue that the multi mega or the wonder mega are even nicer and they are beautiful things um, um, I particularly love the multi mega because it's so small again um, so well packaged together feels so well made awesome bit of kit I, probably, I should have put that in the honourable mentions really um, both the multi mega and the wonder mega so we'll throw them in here for good measure um, because they're basically the same as a mega drive and mega CD in one unit stunning so that was number uh, seven now number six perhaps one you might not expect um, I have got a lot of nostalgia for this console but I also think it's a magnificent looking console more so now than perhaps the games that are on it I, you know I still think it looks fantastic the games perhaps haven't aged as well I can't show it you physically because it's hard to uh, get off the shelf because it's wired in and awkward to remove because the power leads hardwired um, and it's the Panasonic 3DO again I'll put a picture up here so you can see it awesome design 
love how it looks. Um, and you've got the kind of four pillars in the corner, if you like. Um, just kind of makes the console look grand and important to me. And I love the kind of raised section on the top of the console. And it's got a lovely texture on it and sort of um, mottled black and grey style. Um, and you've got the embossed Panasonic logo. Absolutely stunning looking thing in my opinion. Still looks awesome today. Um, absolutely love it. Fantastic. That's the Panasonic 3DO and that was number 6. Now number 5. We're getting into the real top stuff in my opinion now. Um, and I've got to say there's absolutely no nostalgia here for me. Um, because I, I never owned one back in the day. I just think it's such a cool and iconic design. And I'm talking about the Woody. The Atari 2600, the Atari VCS, call it what you will. This is a 2600 plus actually, because um, I haven't got an original. Um, this was a good compromise for me. Um, I just think it's a stunning looking thing. Um, again, very 1970s. I just, I just love how it looks. I can't explain it. I just think it looks amazing. I also like the Vader model, which is obviously now wood and it's all black. It's nice, but for me, the Woody is a sensational looking bit of kit. Obviously, you know, again, very angular. Could have been designed with a ruler, but an absolute stunner for me. That's the Atari 2600. So, we're at number four. Um, well, let's just, let's just show it, shall we? It's Atari again, and it's the Jaguar. Now, you can moan as much as you like about the Jaguar. There are many faults, but you can't say it's not a good-looking console. I just think it's mega. Again, it kind of looks... It kind of looks like a spaceship to me. Uh, you've got these kind of angled, grooved vent things on the back. It feels like, I don't know, it feels like it could be flying through the air in some kind of Star Wars or, you know, Star Trek film. And I just love how the cartridge sits in the back. You've got this sort of raised, circular hump in the middle. I really like the Jaguar logo. Not get it no glare I just absolutely stunning even from the back it kind of looks like the back of a spaceship as well you know, you've got the embossed entire on the back of the car it's just absolutely fantastic looking thing that's the Atari Jaguar and that's my fourth pick or number four in my chart right number three I haven't got one of these to show you unfortunately um, sadly sold mine six or seven years ago regretted it ever since more or less because so I didn't sell it for much money and in, in recent years they've gone absolutely crazy money I wouldn't buy another one at the, at the money they are but they are mega looking things and I'm talking about the PC Engine Super Graphics if you've not seen one they're quite an obscure console kind of an enhanced PC Engine um, they only ever released 5 or 6 games for it all the other PC Engine games work on it but only 5 specific games that only work on that or 6, I forget which um, but it's the design of the console we're talking about and it looks like an engine that you've pulled out of a car that's kind of the design of it to me um, and you've got sort of six ports what you might think kind of look a bit like spark plug um, like you've seen a proper car engine just a mega looking thing honestly and you've got the kind of the central sort of section which should be like the head of your engine 
and then you've got the, the like the like I say the, the spark plugs either side mega looking thing absolutely love it I just I'm gutted I'm gutted I sold it um, obviously I've put the picture up so you can actually see what I'm talking about if you're not aware of it um, but what a stunning design um, I, oh, it's just mega that's the super graphics so we've only got two to go my number two pick again I can't show you because I've, uh, I've not got one and I've never owned one actually which seems crazy for something so high on my list I know um, but it's not something I've ever that, been that bothered about owning because you know it's so old it's such a pain to get working on a, on a PAL TV I've just never sort of made the effort um, it would be nice as a shelf piece to be honest if I could buy one not working I, I'd consider it to be honest because that wouldn't bother me it'd just be nice to have it to look at and I'm talking about the Japanese Sega SG-1000 a picture of which you will be seeing now I just love how it looks again very basic very sort of late 70s early 80s but I love the kind of the stark contrast between the white console and you've got the really big Sega logo on the actual console just looks stunning for me I just love how it looks I think it's well it's my second favorite looking console ever so you can you can sort of understand how much I like it obviously it's, it's a Japan only exclusive precursor to the master system so obviously games are very basic but that doesn't matter it looks a sensational bit of kit um, I would like one but who knows so here we are we've got to the top of the list what is the best looking console ever made for me um, you might have guessed you might think god why hasn't he mentioned this well maybe it's because I'm about to so the best looking console ever made for me is the SNES Super Nintendo Super Famicom in this case call it what you will it's just an awesome design in my opinion it looked great at the time and it's looked great ever since very simple I don't know what it is it just looks stunning in my opinion absolutely mega looking thing the uh, the Japanese one and the European one are obviously exactly the same more or less really aside from the logo here is slightly different it's just iconic much like they all are I suppose really but for me this is my personal favourite console to look at and I think it probably always will be to be honest even though I'm you know I'm more of a Sega sort of fanatic really if I'd got to choose one I'd be Sega but this just looks stunning the ironic thing really with the Super Nintendo being the greatest looking thing ever for me is that the American version is somewhat ironically possibly the worst looking console ever made I don't know what they were thinking but why would you design or why would you have a design like the original Super Famicom and think hmm no I'm not going to uh, release that in uh, our territory we're going to totally redesign it again with a ruler and we're going to make it look as ugly as possible well if that was the brief you've got to say it was a job well done because this is one ugly mother I mean it's an awesome console don't get me wrong but how can the same thing be so beautiful and so atrocious it's always kind of fascinated me 
how is that possible? You know? But anyway, they were my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure you might have a very different list. Um, if you want to do your own list, you know, in your own video, please feel free. Um, but they were my favourite ten anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. All being well. Sayonara.